Wow, we've got a lot to unpack here. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the Darlington race for the NASCAR Cup Series, uh, with it being the first race of the playoffs. We're also going to talk about the news involving Denny Hamlin and kind of expanding on that from the last video, as well as some of the new playoff uh, rules and looks for the cars, as well as some upcoming stuff for the channel. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so let's get into it. But if you close your eyes... What is up everybody? My name is Jack Queen. Welcome back to the channel. And as I stated earlier in the intro, we have got a lot to talk about. Now this was the playoff field entering Darlington uh, earlier today, as well as this is the look uh, for the cars for this year's playoffs with the yellow spoiler and the yellow nameplate compared to last year where it just said playoffs on the nameplate and had a somewhat uh, silverish spoiler that kind of blended in with all the other cars. So a different look, kind of reminiscent back to 2014 through 2016 uh, with the NASCAR uh, chase, some NASCAR Sprint Cup chase for the playoffs. Um, so kind of reminiscent about that, like to see that back. Um, and then this is what the results look like after Darlington. This is what the playoff picture looks like after Darlington. Uh, obviously, Denny Hamlin locked into the next round uh, with his win at Darlington and a thrilling finish between him and Kyle Larson. Uh, but some of the drivers at the bottom here, Bowman, Bush, Byron, McDowell, all ran into issues early on in this race. Uh, early in stage one, Bowman got into the wall with a flat tire. William Byron, nowhere to go, trying to avoid his teammate, ends up clipping the back bumper of Alex Bowman. Uh, unfortunately, kind of ending Bowman's day. He was still able to run, but ended up finishing four laps down. Uh, Byron was able to continue, uh, but later on blew his tire, uh, I think early into stage three, or late in stage two. Uh, William Byron blew his tire, went into the straight into the wall. His day was done. Uh, Michael McDowell, who currently sits 22 points out of the playoffs, uh, got loose trying to avoid a slow uh, Eric Jones in the 43, got loose in that new pavement up in turn two, uh, and ultimately wrecked and was out of the race early. First car out. Uh, Kyle Busch made contact with Austin Dillon and um, ended his day. Uh, early. Chase Elliott also ran into issues late in the race uh, with the three-wide incident between uh, Christopher Bell and Bubba Wallace. Chase ended up cutting a tire going into turn one, ultimately ending his day. And a lot of other playoff drivers uh, had issues. Uh, and as you see here on the screen, we've got the top 20 finishers of this race. Obviously, Denny Hamlin winning uh, tonight his first race win of the 2021 season. He has gone winless up until this point, and now he's locked himself into the round of 12 with this win at Darlington. Kyle Larson finishing second. Ross Chastain, a non-playoff driver, finishing third. And then, of course, you have Martin Truex and then Kevin Harvick in the top five, rounding that out. Also, some notable finishes uh, down the leaderboard. Um, but overall, not very many playoff drivers didn't have issues. And a lot of the playoff drivers had issues. Truex got caught speeding on pit road on a late restart on one of the later cautions in the race. Larson went full send trying to pass Hamlin for the lead and ended up going into the wall on the final lap of the race. Still managed to finish second. Denny Hamlin obviously getting the win. Harvick had loose wheels. Ryan Blaney spun earlier and lost his brakes. Obviously, we know the incidents between Bowman, Byron, uh, Kyle Busch, Michael McDowell, and Chase Elliott. They all ran into issues. Um, Kurt Busch was actually relatively mistake free. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've heard a single bad thing about uh, Kurt Busch uh, this race. Uh, so good, uh, good run for Kurt Busch. Joey Logano obviously ran really clean. Uh, Brad Keselowski was up and down uh, all race long. Ended up getting a solid finish tonight. Um, but overall, a really rough race for a lot of playoff contenders. Uh, obviously, this is the first race of the round of 16 and the first race of the playoffs. So a lot of these drivers really don't have much to really uh, start panicking on. The one driver that I would really start panicking for would be Michael McDowell. He's 
he can technically still point his way in, but with the way that Front Row Motorsports runs, he's pretty much going to have to win at either Richmond or Bristol, um, which are the final two races uh, coming up in the schedule. Uh, obviously, in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, they've still got a couple races left before their playoffs start. And uh, yesterday, Noah Gregson finally locked himself in with getting his first win of the 2021 season, getting himself locked into the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. Sheldon Creed goes two for two in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series, winning Gateway a couple weeks ago, as well as winning Darlington uh, Friday night. Or earlier, no, it was actually earlier today. I take that back. It was earlier today. Sheldon Creed goes two for two in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series uh, playoffs uh, and has locked himself in to the next round, the round of eight. Um, so, all around Darlington wild card, and it wasn't your typical Darlington weekend. Normally, the uh, Southern 500 is usually the throwback weekend for the Cup Series and for NASCAR, uh, but earlier this season, they ran Darlington back in May. And they changed that to the throwback race. We saw a couple throwbacks tonight. Obviously, Kevin Harvick throwing back to Cale Yarbrough. We saw Josh Balicki throwing back to Rusty Wallace. And we also threw, uh, saw Matt DiBenedetto making a throwback to the early days of Wood Brothers. Uh, so, we got, so we saw a couple of throwbacks uh, in tonight's race. But overall, you saw your typical regular primary paint schemes. No throwbacks. Um, now, on to news involving Denny Hamlin. As I stated last time... Everything that his wife has said, or girlfriend, uh, Jordan Fish, should be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, and it seems to have come out that as of recent, Jordan Fish's Twitter is completely gone. Like, her Twitter page is completely gone. There's no traces of it or anything. All we have is screenshots of the actual tweets that she sent. Um, and Hamlin has yet to come out with a statement about it, and NASCAR hasn't even said anything about it, nor has any NASCAR social media said anything about it. Uh, and obviously, evident by today, didn't seem to affect him, didn't seem to affect him yesterday during the Xfinity race. He just ran normally. Uh, obviously, Hamlin came out and frickin' won today at Darlington. So it obviously goes to show that none of this is really affecting his performance uh, so that's obviously good for Denny Hamlin. Um, and for all we know, this could be fake. It could be fake at this point. Uh, but we don't know at this point. And the situation that's kind of that's allegedly happening happening with Denny Hamlin is also kind of happening in the hockey world with one of the San Jose Sharks players, Evander Kane. Evander Kane's dealing with a lot of similar issues. Uh, getting called out by his uh, wife, who they recently just had a kid with. Uh, but in this instance, Kane's wife called him out on a gambling issue that he has. Kane has had an issue with gambling in the past, uh, but that's more of a topic for another uh, video. Um, but I'll dive into uh, that a bit deeper. Um, but on a lighter note, um, big things are going to be coming to the channel. Uh, obviously, I'm able to upload a lot more uh, rather than doing a whole bunch of live streams from my PlayStation. Uh, and so things are looking a lot more cleaner, a lot more professional on the channel, uh, which means that a lot more big things are going to be coming onto the channel. Obviously, you're going to get a lot more content like you've just seen uh, just now in this video, doing reactions to races, uh, coming up with news, uh, reports and stories uh, from different sports that I follow, like hockey, football, racing, uh, between NASCAR, IndyCar, and Formula One. Uh, football is going to be a big thing. Basketball is going to become a thing on this channel. Uh, Disney theme parks are going to be coming onto the channel. As you can see behind me, I've got some Pop Funko figures and some bobbleheads of different things that I'm into. Uh, this is going to be a familiar background, so kind of get used to that. As well as we've got uh, drum covers coming up back onto the channel. It has been over three years, I think, uh, since I last uploaded a drum cover video. Uh, so there's going to be more drum covers coming to the channel. Uh, so be sure and be on the lookout for those ones. Um, I've got everything 
set up now to where I can actually start filming again and actually filming stuff um, in my actual room. Um, and then anytime I'm going to be going out of state or going on a trip to like Universal Studios, Disney World, Disneyland, anywhere, you guys are going to be coming along with me and we're going to do, and there's going to be videos coming up from that as well. Um, I know, I think, I know definitely next year I'm going to be going to uh, Disney World and going on a Disney cruise, the second voyage of the new Disney Wish. Um, so that's going to be coming up to the channel uh, next summer. Uh, that's definitely a trip for certain that's going to get recorded and looked at uh, and uploaded to the channel. Um, so be on the lookout for that one next year. Um, but last week, I uploaded the video of Denny Hamlin's Trouble. And the video of the title was, Is Denny Hamlin in Trouble? That video peaked so much onto the channel. It got so many views, and I got a bunch of subscribers for it. Before that video, I only had 54 subscribers. And I think now I'm at a total of like 71 or 72, um, which is honestly like really huge for me. I honestly didn't think I'd get that far. I honestly didn't think that I'd have a video peak as high as that one did. Um, but nobody else seemed to cover that topic of what was going on with Denny Hamlin. And so I kind of did it like late that, that night and kind of recorded it and it was, it was like a short quick video that I did but it brought some light to it and obviously people were just as curious as I was and they found out that someone made a video of it and watched it and it just peaked so much and I was able to and it helped grow the channel just ever so slightly and to me that is so awesome it's so cool to you know kind of see that for a small creator like I am you know, it's been it's been rough for me trying to get videos up for you guys and trying to do stuff and trying to be more active on here. It, it gets a lot, especially with me being a junior in high school this year, doing everything for school as well as doing other extracurricular activities. It's it gets a little rough and it gets a little complicated. And trying to find time to do videos in that is it gets pretty it gets it's get, it gets rough. It gets really rough. And YouTube nowadays is more about like posting videos every day and making content for for people that who will enjoy it and like I've, I've tried I've tried doing content like that I've tried branching out in different sort of areas um, with like the gaming live streams and drum covers um, and then obviously recently with the content with like the Disneyland vlogs that I did a couple weeks ago uh, the Denny Hamlin video that I did last weekend um, or earlier this week, I think, um, doing that, but, like, it, it gets, it gets a little much, um, and having a channel like that one perform so well on, on a small channel like mine, and really helping out the channel as much as it did, it was, it was mind-blowing to me, and I honestly can't thank you guys enough for that one, that was strictly all on you. I put like very minimal effort into that. Like I did some research on it uh, and just kind of made a video to put it out there quick. Um, but everything that happened from that video going up and going, like it kind of exploded and the channel growth that I kind of received after that, that's all on you guys. Like you're the reason why that happened. Uh, and I can't thank you guys enough for it. Even though that it's, it's not much for maybe some other YouTubers, but for small channels like mine, and for a creator like me, it means so much. And I honestly can't thank you guys enough for just the, like, expansion that the channel got. Um, so I kind of wanted to end that video on that message. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked that, hit that subscribe button and... Uh, click the bell icon to be notified when we upload, uh, or when I upload a new video. Be sure to hit that like, uh, like button if you liked it. Give it a big thumbs up. Uh, and as always, I will see you guys in the very next episode. Thank you guys. Peace.